today I'd like to review the HLA typing reports that we generate from every uh, HLA sequencing run that we make. Uh, this is a standard report that's generated with every sample within a HLA typing run. And we'll just go through the different fields here and do a quick review of what they mean or how to interpret them. So obviously the uh, report has a sample name. That sample name, of course, will be from your, your sample nomenclature. Then there's a uh, typing result in sort of a spreadsheet format here. And what it shows, first of all, is in the, uh, the first column, it shows the different uh, HLA genes that were sequenced in the run. Uh, first of all, it shows the, <clears throat> the class 1 alleles, uh, HLA-A, HLA-B, and HLA-C. Then it shows the class 2 alleles, in this case, um, DRB1, DRB4, DRB5. DQB1, DQA1, DPB1, and DPA1. In some runs, we'll also see a DRB3. Uh, it, it depends on the, uh, the patient that you're working with. And so in this case, it just shows the class 1 and class 2 alleles in the, in the first column. And I should mention that we typically run 11 loci sequencing runs, uh, although we can do different combinations of the genes, you know, just you could do just class one uh, alleles if you wanted to, HLA, A, B, and C, or you could do class two or any any combination. Then there's two columns here showing the allele one typing and allele two typing. And again, we typically run uh, four field resolution. And um, in another screencast, we're going to go over the uh, HLA nomenclature. We won't do that here. It's pretty involved and can be a little bit confusing. But basically, uh, in the four field uh, resolution here, the first field, it just shows the allele group identifier. That would be this one here, like 0, 2 for HLA-A. Uh, the second field shows the allele ID within that group. Uh, the third field shows the, uh, the, the identifier for synonymous DNA substitutions uh, within the coding region. And then the fourth field shows DNA substitutions in the non-coding regions. I uh, won't go over any more detail on that. Like I say, we'll have more information on the HLA nomenclature in a different screencast. But you can see for each HLA gene, it, it shows the, uh, the four field typing for that, for that allele. In some cases, you might only see three fields, even though we asked for four. And that just means the typing algorithm could not get the fourth field resolved or display it. And so it doesn't show up here. Then we have two more columns, CWD1 and CWD2. These refer to the, uh, the status of common and well-documented alleles. So if you see a C here, it means that it's a, it's a commonly seen allele within a certain population. And that's determined by the IMGT uh, board. And then also we have a WD, which means well-documented. And well-documented just means there is a substantial amount of literature that uh, is associated with that particular allele. In some cases, uh, we'll see the, uh, the identifier here will be CWD, which we don't have in this case, but it might say CWD, which means it's common and well-documented. You'll see that quite often as well. If it says no, uh, that just means that there was no uh, CWD status in the IMGT database. And so those are your fields. In some cases as well, you see here for uh, DRB4 and DRB5, the typing algorithm apparently could not make a, uh, a typing call for allele 2. And so in that case, it just shows up being blank. And then, of course, the CWD field is going to be blank uh, going uh, corresponding to that allele. Then finally, in this table, we have the review status. And typically, uh, this will either say not reviewed which means that we just generate the report and then just deliver it to the client. There are two other levels. There is a first review and a second review level. Sometimes if it says uh, it's been reviewed at the first level, that just simply means that we did a, uh, a quality control or QC check at the client's request just to look at the data, make sure that everything looks fine. And then if it passes our QC test, we'll show it here as a, a first review. Uh, then below the typing result block, there is something called allele ambiguities. And the, the ambiguities just simply mean that the typing algorithm, due to high homology between the sequences and the different exons in the HLA genes, uh, it could not make a uh, accurate typing call. And so you'll see it under here, under allele ambiguities. And there's really three columns. There's the major fields, field one and two. There's the third field and the fourth field. 
So for example, if we go down here under the major field, the first one that's listed is DRB5, and it shows you know a typing result of 1111, but it also shows that in the second field, it really it has an ambiguity between 1 and 40. So it's either calling it as 1 1 or 1 40, and uh, it, it could not make an accurate typing call there, so it just calls it as an allele ambiguity. And then you'll see there's some other ones here down for D DRB5 and DQB1. If you go to the third field, uh, we can see there's a couple of ambiguities there. So for DQB1, for example, it shows the typing call as 3 1 1 1, or it shows it as 3 1 41. So there's an ambiguity in the third field, or 3143 or 3144. And so there's a, a third field ambiguity, and that's why it shows up here in the uh, third field column. And then similarly for the fourth field, uh, it shows some fourth field ambiguity. So for example, in HLAA, the typing was uh, first shown as a 2111. But it's also shown as 21116, so there's an ambiguity in the fourth field. Or it could be 21131 or 21150. Again, all fourth field ambiguities. Okay. And then it also includes the CWD status for each one of those, um, in case you need to read that. If we then scroll down a little bit here, there's some, there's some metadata that goes with this. It shows the IMGT uh, library or database that was used. In this case, it was IMGT version 3.35.0, and um, that was a slightly older version. Uh, what we normally try to do is use the most current uh, version of the library, IMGT library. So as soon as a new release comes out, we will use that if we possibly can. This sample report was run back when 3.35 was the current version. Then it shows the, uh, the source files that were used. In this case, these are Illumina short reads paired and read files, and these are gzip compressed FASTQ files that are used, and you can see the, um, the moniker R1 and R2 for the, uh, for the forward read and the reverse read. Whatever files are used for this report will show up here as metadata under the source files. And then finally, we uh, show the sequencing platform type, which in this case was Illumina. So that's, uh, that's it for the HOA report, and I hope this was helpful in trying to, uh, trying to interpret it.